Hey guys, Carl from Purple Moose Place. Today I'm taking a preview look at a prototype copy of the upcoming game Pocket Puffins from designer Edward Bell and publisher Red Stash Games. This is actually the first game from both this designer and this publisher, and it's also a unique one because this is a Kickstarter campaign that will not be offering a physical copy of the game. Instead, this will be a print and play game only. The good news is this is a very, very small card game, so if you do decide to get it, you will not need to print a whole lot. But this is a sort of abstract strategy solo game in which you're trying to organize the order of these puffin cards, ultimately to get them in a certain order, to score points. Quick disclaimer, as this is a preview of a, an upcoming game, I was given advance access to this by the publisher. I was also given a physical prototype copy of this game for this video. But with that said, as always, I will do my best to give you my own honest opinion on the game. With that said, let's head down to the table to see how this one plays, and then I'll meet you back up here to let you know what I think. So to set up a game of pocket puffins, begin by taking the puffin cards, giving them a good shuffle, and then taking out from the top of the deck one puffin of each color, red, yellow, and blue, making sure that you have a mixture of igloo sort of directions in the background. So there's a red, there's a blue, and there's a yellow. Look, we've got two on this direction and one pointing to the left. So those three will work. Let's set those down for just a second, flipping these over instead to this sort of pattern side. And I'm going to set those pattern cards down here in the bottom corner of the screen. Next, I'm going to take the six move cards, giving those a good shuffle. Placing those down here somewhere. And then I take the remaining puffin cards and I'm going to put them in a row across the screen so that there is a row of nine puffins across the screen. And with that, we are all set up for gameplay. So Pocket Puffins is going to play out over a series of turns, trying to rearrange these puffins such that they match this pattern as printed on the pattern card. And when I'm able to do that, I can choose then to score this card. I don't have to immediately do it as soon as I match this pattern because the number of points I'm going to score is once I have this pattern arranged, the number of complete igloos I've made in that row. So right now, if, for example, this was matching the pattern, I would score simply only one point for this complete igloo. All of the other ones are incomplete. Then I would take that card, setting it aside, and sort of rotating it to show the number of points that I scored on that card. And the goal of this game is for me to complete these three cards. If I complete all three cards, I win, but then my score is going to be based on the value of each of those cards that I completed. So let me stick this there just so I have some space for completed cards over there. And the way that the game is going to work is this. I'm going to take from this deck the top card. And each of these cards is going to have one color that can move three spaces, one color that can move two spaces, and one color that can move a single space. And I get to choose one of those, moving that full space or full number of spaces in either direction. And it must move the full number of spaces. So if I'm on the edge of the board and I can't move that many spaces, I cannot choose that penguin or that puffin to move. Then I will continue doing that until this deck completely runs out, at which point I will take all of those cards, shuffle them, and remove the top card from the game. So if I have lost all of the cards or removed all of the cards from the game before I'm able to complete all three patterns, I will have lost the game. Otherwise I win, and again my score is based on how well I completed those patterns creating igloos. All right, so the first card I've got here is yellow three, blue two, or red one. And I need blue, blue, yellow, red, yellow, red, red, blue, yellow. Well, I see a blue, yellow here. If I move this one, one, two, three, this and this becomes that blue yellow and it's a complete uh, igloo. So let's do that. One, two, three. And there's my first completed igloo. And they're also in the right location. So that's a good start keeping them over there like that. Then 
Next card. Red three. Well, look at that. We got lucky again because if I do red, 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 that's three moves for this red. We've got another igloo, and that is yellow, blue, red, red, yellow, blue, red, red. We're doing really good this game. All right, then next. Yellow, red, yellow, I need. Yellow, red, yellow. Well, if I move this yellow here and this yellow here, that's good. And that is a yellow one. So let's go ahead and do that first. The next I have to figure out a way to get this yellow back here, but that's okay. I still have some cards left. Now I've got a yellow one or a blue two. Blue two works perfectly because I go one, two like that. So I'm almost there, except I need this yellow to move in there. So I need a two yellow if possible. That's not a two yellow. Huh, yuck. Well, let's go one, two, three, yellow. Oh wait, that does it. Huh? No, that's only two, I'm cheating. I'm cheating, that's one, that's two, that's three. That doesn't do it, okay. But if I get a one yellow, I can put it back, or a one red. So I've got a two out of three chance that I can finish with this card. One red, so this red moves right one space, like that. My pattern is blue, blue, yellow, red, yellow, red, red, blue, yellow. I match the pattern, I've got one, two, three, four igloos. So I'm going to take that card and rotate it to be four points. And I've got another pattern card here, that is the end of the deck, so we are gonna shuffle that up. And this card without looking is gone from the game. And we continue. Blue, yellow, red. Blue, yellow, red again. Blue, yellow, red. So if I kill a red there, then I need blue, yellow, red. And yellow, red can't work that way. Yeah, so that's where my dead end is going to be. Huh. All right, I need a blue and a red. Well, we'll see. I don't want to be crazy. Let's see what happens. Blue, three. Well, I know that this blue needs to head back that way, so let's do that first. One, two, three. Yeah, was that smart? Maybe. All right, next. Red, three, two, yellow, one, blue. Yellow, red. Huh. I really want this yellow, red there. But I may just say forget about it. All right, let's see. Blue, yellow. Yeah, let's send this guy two that way. There's my blue, yellow. That's... A, that's the start of here, and that's a thing. Then I need a red-blue. This red and that blue would work perfectly if I can make it happen. Hmm, huh. three yellow. Red, blue, yellow, and red. These two go there. Okay, so three yellow is one, two, three. That's fine, because that's where it needs to be. Then, one red, two yellow. Yeah, let's do one red, because then I've got the red-blue lined up. I just need to get rid of this red. Go. One, two, three is perfect. One, two, three. Blue, yellow, red. Blue, yellow, red. And then I need a blue, yellow, red. So I need this red there, and I've done it. All right, next, shuffling again. Losing a card. Turning it over. And that's a problem. But that's okay, we'll do blue one. Like that. Next card. Red or yellow one is perfect. No, of course, it's a blue one. 
All right. Well, if I do, no, because then it's got to be two. All right. Well, let's just keep playing around and see what happens. Come on, red two. No. That's not good. Huh. Well, I'm just going to do yellow one so they don't get too far away. I don't love it. I don't love it at all. Blue three, red one. Well, we'll do the red one. I really need a blue two and I'm wasting lots of cards. I'm getting greedy with this four points, guys. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Red one. Red one. All right. I need a yellow or a blue one. Go. Yes. Blue one. And I think I'm going to lose because I'm running low on cards. But that's blue, yellow, red. Blue, yellow, red. Blue, yellow, red. One, two, three, four igloos. I'm at eight points. Now, can I get this made to score anything? Red, red, blue, blue. Yellow, yellow. Red, blue, yellow. If this comes here. I'm not even looking at igloos. This comes here. This and this have to go all the way there. Let's see what we can do. Well, red two already does that. So let's start there. Don't think I have enough cards to do anything else, but let's see what we got. I got three turns left. Let's see. One. Red three. One, two, three. Again, I'm just trying to get stuff into position here. I need a yellow three and a blue two. There's my yellow three, which puts yellow there. I'm not getting any kind of points out of this. Oh, but that's two. Yellow, blue, red, yellow, yellow, blue, red, red. Yeah, there's no way to do it. Because I only have one card left, and there's no blue two left. So guess what, guys? Boop! Red three or blue one. Blue one does that. We are officially out of cards with one movement away. That is the end of the game. So that is a loss with eight points. This is usually the part of the video where I take a look at components. Now, this game is headed to Kickstarter as a print and play only game. So there's no need for me to comment on the quality of the cards because the cards are going to be as great as you make them, guys. But the artwork, you've seen everything here. It's basically three images that's been reused over and over and over again. But the puffins are cute. I like them. Here's the red guy. Here's the yellow guy, here's the blue guy. The blue guy's got those little tendril things on his face. Super, super cute animals. The igloos look nice. It's really fun to fit the cards together because the igloos look very nice when you complete them. I do like this sort of snow texture that's over top of everything. It gives some depth to the pictures and this sort of watercolory look to the background. I like it. The Iconography on each of these cards, very, very simple, both number and number of steps. Very easy to see what each one's doing very quickly. The patterns are a little bit small, I guess, but you didn't want to make them huge, and that's how it fits on the card. The idea that the card is rotated to show how many points you get, clever idea. Again, very easy to see the order of things. I do like that he colored the entire penguin or entire puffin that color rather than just the coats as they are in the picture because it does make the colors stand out quite a bit more but yeah in general i love the way that this game looks it's very simple but it's very clean and it looks very very nice so that's all i have to say on the components maybe back up top and i'll let you know what i think about the game itself welcome back i hope you enjoyed the playthrough now before i get into my thoughts on this game i want to come forward with sort of two things that I want to mention first. And the first thing is another sort of warning. Warning is the wrong word, but another announcement that this game is a print and play game when you back it on the campaign, which means you will need to print your own copy of this game for what that's worth. So I want to put that out there so you understand that going into it. But 
I also want to give some reassurance that because this game is such a small game, it really isn't that big of an ask to create your own copy. As somebody who has done a bit of print and play and who is still somewhat daunted and scared by sort of larger print and play experiences or projects, this is the kind of game that basically I could take the, the, print, the file, print one side of the cards on a single side of paper, another side of the card on a different piece of paper, cut out both sides and sort of sandwich a playing card between them, stick it in a card sleeve, and that is good enough quality to play a game like this. Now, if you want to spend more time and more effort to turn it into a more professional version of the game, feel free to do that, but I don't want anybody to be scared away by the, the idea of creating their own game when it really is as simple as printing something on a regular printer, getting some playing cards and some sleeves, and creating a game pretty quickly. Also, the other thing I want to point out here before I talk about how I feel about this game is that this game is a small solo card game. It is not a big box board game experience, so I can't fault it for not being that. What I mean is, I can't say, wow, this game is amazing because it offers so much stuff and it's so big on the table and blah, blah, blah. But I also can't say that it's bad because it doesn't do those things because at its own sort of core, the nature of this game is not that. This is a very small card game which means it also gets positives for its portability. It's very quick to pull out, to play through, and it does offer its own kind of experience. So I wanna sort of put that out there first before I start talking about this game because I'm not going to say this game is amazing and it blew my mind, but that's not really what it's setting out to do. At its heart, this is a solo puzzle abstract strategy game that sort of reminds me of things from Button Shy like Fishing Lessons or the more recently a nice cuppa. This is a sort of line of cards that I'm doing something to manipulate the order of the cards in order to make those cards meet a certain sort of pattern which then scores me points moving on to the next pattern and once I've gotten through three of those patterns I've successfully beaten the game. But the way that it does it is unique. It's not the same as those other games. First off, there's no programming in this game. Everything is based on a card flip that you're going to choose one of three sort of actions from that card to move one penguin, or sorry, one puffin of a certain color, either left or right, a certain number of spaces based on what it says on the card. And each of these cards is going to have one color moving three spaces, one color moving two spaces, and then the third color moving only one space. And I'm going to choose one of those and make that move. And I'm making that move, you can see up here behind me these sort of pattern cards, I'm making that move to get the certain colored puffins in certain locations in a line. And in order to clear a goal card, that's all I need to do is put them in order. And if that was all there was to the game, that would be somewhat interesting, but really wouldn't be all that much of a puzzle and wouldn't be all that much fun because there's a second level to the organization in this game. And that is you're scoring points not based on completing these goals. You're scoring points based on completing igloos as you fulfill these goals. And what I mean by that is each of these puffin cards also has a half of an igloo. Some of them pointing to the left, some of them pointing to the right. And you will always be able to put them in any order you want to to fulfill the goal, but for every completed igloo you make, you score one point when you trigger the end of that goal, or when you decide to trigger the end of the goal, because it's not automatic. Once I've got the cards in the right order, I can still play with them if I'm hoping to score more points before moving on to the next goal. So that adds a nice layer of interesting sort of push your luck to this game, because now I'm trying to decide should I move on to the next goal or should I move on or sort of sorry, should I continue to try and push for points at this goal before moving on to the next goal? And this balance is interesting because ultimately this game is running on a timer. That deck of cards that I'm turning over to determine which colors can move and how far they can move, every time I run through that deck, I'm shuffling that deck up and removing one card from the game. So slowly those cards are disappearing and eventually I have no cards left that's the end of the game, and if I haven't succeeded in the goals before the cards all run out, then I lose the game. So I'm not losing based on not scoring enough points. I'm losing based on not completing enough of these goal cards before the end game is triggered. But at the same time, I'm not scoring points based on completing those goals. I'm scoring points based on building igloos while completing those goals. 
So the timer mechanism and the point scoring mechanism are connected, but ultimately they're two separate pieces of this puzzle. And that makes for a really interesting decision space. Because as I mentioned, there's this idea of pushing my luck to get as many points as I can before the game runs out. And I'm gonna say, I've played this game a ton now, and I think I've won once, and that's because I'm always, always, always pushing to score four points on each goal. And I probably shouldn't be doing that, but it feels so good when you get everything lined up with all of the igloos built on that row, and you score those four points, and I get four points, and I get four points, and then I get to the last round, and whoops, I've lost. Now, is that the right decision or not? I don't know. Should I be aiming that 4-4-4 four, four, and four is the goal that I'm trying to beat, and if I could get there, I win, and if not, I don't? Or should I really be trying to get 1-1-1, one, 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 finishing that, then try 1-1-2 one, one, or 1-2-1, one, one, and try incrementally increasing the score every time I play to try and do better to sort of complete the game with more points as I play. That's probably the right way to do it, but my brain keeps saying, you can get one more igloo, you can get one more igloo, and it's that about the game that I really do enjoy. There's a lot of this, come on, you can do it, come on, you can do better, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Uh, maybe those cards are too far this time for what I've got, and it's gonna take too many moves to get there. Now I should trigger the goal and move on to the next goal. And it's only three goals. And you start with so many cards, and your brain says you can do it, but very quickly you start running out of cards, and three goals feels like a whole lot to get done, rather than, than, than it does at the beginning of the game where it feels like, eh, it's just three, that's easy. So ultimately, this sort of core mechanism, the core puzzle of the game is something that I really enjoy. Now, that being said, I can't say all positives about this game, because this game is very luck dependent. It is very random, because if I get the random assortment of shuffled puffins out on the, the, the board or out on the play space in an order that's almost the same as the goal already or in an order where lots of the sort of igloos are already built up, then it's going to take me less turns to get them in the right order. It's going to be faster for me to get through the goals. Vice versa, if everything's all in weird places and all mixed up, it's going to take me lots of work to get to the end, then I may not finish that time while I play. Likewise, as I move from goal to goal, if the orders or if the arrangements are similar enough or patterned similarly enough, it may be easier one play versus in another play. And then also based on the cards that are flipping out. If the card that I'm flipping moves the exact puffin that I need every time that I flip over that card, well surely I'm going to achieve the goal much faster than if the card that I flip over doesn't work exactly the way I want it to work. But ultimately, that randomness doesn't bother me too much because, again, this is a very portable game. This is a very quick-to-play game, and the puzzle is still an interesting one. And sometimes when things don't go your way is when the game is more interesting because when things don't go your way is when you need to start thinking of more creative sort of solutions to solve the puzzle. And realistically, it might be that the designer of this game has played it so many times that he knows these patterns and he can see how things work and it may be that any random setup done however it's randomly set up could work out that you actually get a full 12 points at the end of the game. And it's just that I haven't played it enough and that I haven't seen the patterns and I'm not right, making the right decisions. So maybe I'm just not good enough at the game yet. And it is possible to score 12 points on every random ordering of this game. I don't know if that's true. It doesn't feel that way to me. But again, it doesn't bother me, because if I play through and I get a really bad score, it only took me 10 minutes to play through, and I set it up again in two seconds, and I try it again. And I can play through three or four times in a session and see how well I did sort of overall for that day. And I, I again, there's not a whole lot going on in this game. This is not a big box, crazy board game experience that has all these bells and whistles that does all this stuff, but I can't fault it for that, because it is a very nice, streamlined, easy, small, quick to play, solo puzzle abstract strategy game. And ultimately the core mechanism, the core loop, the core puzzle of this game is something that's fun for me to play with. It's fun for me to manipulate and it's fun to see how I do and there are exciting winning moments and there are some frustrating losing moments as I'm pushing my luck, as things are moving around, as I'm flipping cards, as I'm getting towards the end of that third goal and slowly running out of cards or even more quickly running out of cards towards the end of the game. 
and I start feeling that, that tension of, can I, can I get there before I run out of cards? It feels good. It's a lot of fun to play. It's very small. It's a print and play game, so it's very cheap on Kickstarter. I recommend that if you are a solo gamer who likes small card games, who likes this sort of pattern manipulation kind of game, definitely give this one a check out. The link to the Kickstarter is in the description down below. Head over and throw some money. <laughs> I don't want to say throw some money, but throw a couple of bucks at the designer for the work that they've done. This is quite a bit of fun and it's definitely worth checking out if it's the kind of game that might interest you. As always, thank you for watching the video. If you did enjoy this video and you did find it helpful, please remember as always to like, subscribe, and click the bell icon below, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks.